we strive to help you in every aspect of your lawn, gardening, and landscaping needs. We have awesome lawn decor, everything from metal art to whatever you might need to spruce up your garden. Our quality of produce is number one. Prices are easily comparable to anywhere. Think about your screen fire beds right now. We need to get going, make that soil ready, and get our planting shoes on. So come on down to Megan's Market and we'll make you a great deal. Not only can we give you the knowledge you need, but our goal is your success. Welcome back to yet another Eastland County Today Live. We are going over some veteran stuff today. HB here has Larry Monroe from Ranger, Texas, and he's going to talk to you guys about an event that's coming up. So without any further ado, let HB take the wheel. Thank you, Jason. Larry, we're glad to have you with us here today. I'll tell you, he, Larry is one of our best correspondents. He, he keeps us posted on everything affecting veterans and and uh, families and programs and we sort of lean on him because we can know we can depend on him to keep us informed and he's bringing us information today on a very important event that's just around the corner tell us about it larry uh mr o'brien we're having a uh, memorial for uh, larry joe rogers uh from ranger he uh was the only vietnam veteran from ranger that was uh, killed in action uh, and so we're going to have this memorial for uh, for him and his family is going to be there, his mother and his sister and uh, other family members and friends. And uh, so we're going to uh, honor him by doing this in the family. Now, where are you going to be doing this? We're going to uh, have this memorial at the Vietnam Veterans Memorial Park in Ranger on uh, Loop 254 East next to the Ranger Fire Station. Uh, this will be uh, March the 24th, uh, Tuesday, Tuesday, March 24th. At March 24th. Let's that, 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 emphasize. What, what day of the week is that? That'll be on a Tuesday. Tuesday, okay. Uh, that'll be on Tuesday. It'll, it'll, uh, we're going to gather up at the park around 1030. The program will start at 11 a.m. And uh, we'll go until, uh, until it's completely over and everyone leaves. How's the parking out there, Larry? We have around... More or less four acres of parking. There's plenty of parking area. There's no problem with the parking. Uh, we have a good, good, good facilities. We have two restrooms there, and we have uh, running water, and we have a lot of area to park, and it's it's uh, really nice. Tell us about this man. Uh, Larry Joe was a senior in high school and uh, 19. He got out, he graduated from Ranger High School and. Uh, 1967 and he went straight into the marines he uh, always wanted his mother told me that he always wanted to be a marine that when he was a little child at 12 years old and 13 he always said when he got out of high school he wanted to go into the marines and he did and uh, uh right after his basic training and uh the marines sent him to st larry joe to vietnam and uh he was killed on March 17th, uh, 1968. Uh, he was the only one from Ranger Texas that was killed in Vietnam. And uh, How about, don't I understand that you've already erected a monument at that site yes, for him, to him? Yes, we have a Vietnam Memorial there. And mm -hmm. It has all the names of the ones from Ranger that served in the Vietnam War. And also it, the names of the ones that was uh, the Vietnam era veterans that didn't serve in Vietnam, but served during the service during that time. Their names are on there also. According to the material I just ran across, this uh, this writer says there were 9.2 million people who served in, in that era. Yes. God, yes. That's fantastic. There was, uh, in the Vietnam War, there was over 158,000 that were killed in Vietnam, and there was over 300,000 that were wounded in the Vietnam War. Uh, it uh, was a very, very horrible thing. It uh, took the lives of a lot of young men, and uh, but 
at least the men didn't run. They, the young boys served their country and, and, uh, but honorable. So that's, I'm proud of them. Tell, uh, are you comfortable telling us about your own service? My service? Your service. I was in the army. I went in in 1966. Uh, I served in Germany in 67 and 8, uh, 67, 68 during the Tet Offensive. Uh, I was with the 1st Logistical Command and I was in recovery and evacuation. Uh, we had to go in and pick up the load up tanks and trucks and just uh, equipment that was torn up uh, in many different ways. And uh, yeah, that's that's. Basically, what I done, uh, I was I was in the Third Infantry Division before I went to Vietnam, and they just attached me to the First Logistical Command. And uh, I was stationed in uh, Charrain Valley, which is between uh, An Khe and Quinh Yon. And uh, we, our, our main run was we supported the First Cav at An Khe, we made a lot of runs up the An Khe Pass. And that was primarily our, our main area. Since you come home, you've been very active, and I salute you because you have brought more attention to veterans and their needs, and worked with veterans and helped veterans. And I think it's such a noble thing, and and you can only wish that there were more like you. Well, uh, I love doing what I do because I I, I think that the, the the Vietnam veterans and all veterans. Uh, need to be remembered, and uh, and they need to be. Uh, people need to realize that the Korean veterans, World War II veterans, all the veterans uh, that have served their country with honor, uh, they, they don't need to be forgotten. They need to be remembered in, in all in all ways. And uh, sometimes we we forget to do that. We uh, do. We were talking earlier about the people, the men. You know, uh, there may have been some women. I don't know, but from from Eastman County. And you reminded us that there are nine listed in the courthouse who were killed. Uh, seven. Seven there from, is, there from Eastern seven, County. There were seven uh, Vietnam veterans killed in Eastern County. Uh, Larry Joe was wanted, and there's six others that uh, were killed. We assigned ourselves a chore, and you're going to help us, and we might as well toss out some information right now. We're going to try to find, locate the families of those other six. Yes. And, and and add them to the to the attention uh, memorial in some way. So people who are listening now, uh, if you have a loved one who was killed during the Vietnam War, let us know. Uh, let Larry know uh, so that we can we can properly uh, uh, remember them. Yeah, that uh, we want to remember. We want to sure try to get to these other. The, the other names of the ones and and locate them like you say and and uh, honor and then maybe next year we can uh, honor all of them from from this county that that's uh, were killed in the Vietnam. Well, now you've been doing this one on Larry Joe for how many years? Uh, I think four years, four. And, uh, three or four years. So this will be uh, this this time, you know, if it's the fifth year or whatever year it is, uh, we need a big turnout of people. Yes, uh, I have some some very important people coming. Uh, if you'd like me to go, yeah, I would that. indeed. Tell us what you've got lined up. Well, I have uh, the Disabled Americans Veterans Commander of Chapter Forty One out of Wichita Falls, uh, Joel Jimenez, will be here with uh, some of the members of the Chapter Forty One, uh, and also my uh, our Ranger Veteran Support Group will be there uh, because we this is. The DAB Chapter 41 and the Ranger Veterans Support Group is uh, is once promoting this, doing this together, this memorial for Larry Joe. And uh, Mr. Jeff Milligan, the director of the VA North Texas Healthcare System, uh, Vision 17 from Dallas, he is sending uh, Jim Wheeler. He is a consumer affairs officer with the VA North Texas Healthcare System. He is going to be here to uh, speak uh, at the memorial service. And also, he is sending Command Sergeant Major. Uh, he's retired Marine Sergeant uh, J.B. Edwards. He will also be there as, uh, as to, to be giving a speech about Larry Joe and the Marines. And uh, so I think this will be a very, a 
very good program. Uh, very, and I, I would, I want to see everybody there, regardless whether you're a veteran or, or not. You know, everyone needs to come and and and, and be there and, and see this this memorial. Participate in it. Right. In this same article, Larry, I read uh, this month, March, marks the 50th anniversary of the arrival of 3,500 Marines in the name. So this is an anniversary month right now. Right, right. Uh, this article goes on to describe an effort to build a national museum in Washington, D.C., I presume. And uh, one man has already raised over eight, $8 million to get this thing started. And they want uh, 400,000 personal items to be displayed in this museum in Washington. I think that's a pretty noble effort. Yes, it sure is. And I, I wanted to call your attention, you may be familiar with this, but the uh, Texas uh, House of Representatives issues a calendar every year, and this happens to be a March issue, a March paid, and it brings attention to the Vietnam Memorial in Austin that we have down there. And it's very impressive. Uh, some of us have seen the memorial in Washington. And of course, that's uh, that's especially uh, impressive. Have you been there, Larry? Uh, no, I haven't. You've been, but have you seen any of these traveling miniature? Yes. yes. I know uh, they have come close to us. Seems uh, like maybe Breckenridge had that one right. time. Uh, they had. I believe it was Mineral Well. Mineral Well. I may get wrong about that, but I'm pretty sure. I think Mineral you're Wells. right. Yeah. Uh, they, I knew it had come to this area. Yes. That's pretty impressive, isn't it? It sure is. It sure is. It sure is. They point, and this article points out that so many items, pictures, souvenirs, keepsakes, and so forth, have been left at that national monument in Washington, and and. And these are among the things that are going to be put in this museum. Right. I think that's, I think that's pretty very, neat. Very good. That's, very good. That's, that's going to be very nice. It sure is. What kind of a program now do you anticipate that starts at 11 o'clock, be out by noon? Or, or? Yeah, yes, we're going to, uh, we will have uh, this, the, uh, the prayer, Pledge of Allegiance, and uh, we will have the, the, the speeches, and there will be a talk about Larry Joe. Uh, about the medals he received and that his mother received, and so on. And uh, then after after the after we get through, we will have uh, a lunch. We'll have we'll have hot dogs and uh, different types of uh, food to eat, and, uh, and so on. And then just want everybody to have a good time and enjoy it, and, and uh, enjoy the camaraderie. I'll say this, the events that I have attended with Larry and his group at that site, they treat you right and you really feel at home and it's just an honor to participate with that, the program they have. And I salute him and encourage him and promise our support. You help us publicize this as you frequently do, don't, don't be bashful, let us know. And those people who had loved ones, kin folks, Son, brothers, whatever, lost or killed during the Vietnam War. Let us know. We want to add their names to this this memorial. That's right. That's right. Sorry, right, can you think of anything I have failed to touch? Well, I would just like to mention one more thing, uh, if you don't mind about Go like, right like, ahead. Larry Joe uh, received numerous medals, uh, and after he was after he was killed, uh, his mother was. Uh, awarded the uh, Silver Star and also the Purple Heart for Larry. Silver Stars are rare. Uh, a three-star general named General Carey said for a private in the Marines, it was one of the rarest things ever for, for one to be, for a for a private in the Marines to be honored. I mean, to be decorated with a, with a Silver Star. He, uh, when they were all killed and wounded, and, and most of them were killed. He picked up a machine gun because he lost his rifle. This was uh, something happened to it during all the fighting, and he picked up a soldier's machine gun and and held off the enemy and fought him by himself for 12 minutes. 
uh, till he lost his life. Until and wow. saved, and it saved the ones that were wounded till they could drag them out and get them uh, out of there. And so that's how he uh, that's how he was awarded the Silver Star. Did his mother still live in Ranger? Yes, uh, she lives on Pine Street in Ranger. Uh, she is a good friend of my mother. She is uh, around eighty six or seven years old. She still gets around, got a good mind. And she's she's uh, she's going to be there with her family. That's wonderful. And, uh, uh, one of the saddest things I never want to get when I first started doing this and talking to Ms. Rogers, I didn't know how to approach her. Actually. No, I wouldn't. But uh, being a Vietnam veteran and from Ranger and, and knowing her, well, it was a little easy for me, I guess you might say. But uh, the, I guess the hardest part that hurt me was when I, it's Larry Joe's little sister was 10 years old when, when Larry Joe got killed. And she was telling me that she remembers that day so well because when she seen these two soldiers walking toward their their front door, walking down the sidewalk toward their front door, approaching their house. She said she broke down and fell to her knees crying. She said, Mama said, said Larry's being killed. She said, uh, and said her mother said, What are you talking about? And she looked out the window and seen these two Marines walking toward the front door. And he had, he had been there to notify them that he had been killed. What a story. Listen. If you people are listening to this, if you don't have a heart for this kind of thing, you better go see your cardiologist because you got a problem. Yes, it's uh, it's very, it's very sad. Uh, it's happened, it's happened to so many. Time and time again. Time and time again. Uh, yeah. I won't bring you into where we are today because I, <laughs> knowing you, I expect you have some opinions. I know yes. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This may not be a good time for that. <laughs> Larry, I always I am proud. It. I am proud of our military soldiers and the men and women that are, are fighting for us for our country at this time. I'm so proud of them and the ones that have done thought to come back and we need to stand behind them. Absolutely. And you just keep on keeping on and any way we can help you. I always look forward to shaking hands and seeing Larry because he's always got things going that we like to write about and tell about. And uh, unless he has something else, I'd like to salute our technical director, Jason, because he keeps this thing going and uh, makes it work. Well, thank you very much, HV. This has been an Eastland County Today Live. You guys tune in next week, and we will end up having some more events. I'll see you guys later.